In this video, I'm gonna talk about tact steering and control, but specifically the topic of foreman and super control of the environment in the field, and specifically what responsibilities they have to keep that train of trades steering around constraints and controlling the path ahead by removing roadblocks. So that's what we're gonna cover right now. Stay with us. So there's a couple things that you can do with the foreman and the superintendent out in the field to make sure that we're doing a great job steering around constraints and controlling the path ahead by removing roadblocks. So I do wanna explain this concept. If you were in a building, and let's just make this kind of interesting. Let's say the building was non-typical, okay? And that your first zone looks something like that. Maybe your second zone looks like this third and fourth, you get the point. So as the trades are flowing through here, maybe this was their flow as they go through, they should be experiencing a similar amount of work in each zone as they go. One of the key things that you can track as you're going through the project with the foreman is uh, you can track your handoffs, and this is huge, okay? Uh, because you need to be done, let's say that you started here and you finished here and we're talking about that zone, uh, you need to be done with this whole zone by the end of your tack time. So if the foreman is working in there with his or her crew, right, and the superintendent comes along and is like, hey, um, I want to partner with you, not just rush, push, and panic, or not rush, push, and panic at all. But hey, I want to partner with you. Uh, one of the things you can do with the foreman while you're there is say, hey, can we go ahead and inspect the work that you've already done in the zone and uh, just finish it while we're there? The other thing is, can we, uh, and I should have used green, but I'll use the same color, can we check and make sure everything's ready out ahead? Because that's something that a super and the foreman can do uh, in the field is to make sure that they're finishing and that they're preparing out ahead. And if there's a problem, which I'll mark here with red, then if it's something the foreman can handle with another foreman, great. But if it's not, uh, oh boy, that superintendent has something that he or she can go work on and enable the crews to do their work. Because here's the thing that our industry and construction is blind to. Uh, you don't rush and push and panic workers. You don't rush and push and panic trade partners. You clear the path out ahead. You don't rush and push them. You clear the path out ahead. Clear the path out ahead. So a superintendent's not going to come over here and be a dirt monkey and be like, hey, come on, let's go. It, you're going to go over there and be like, hey, what do you need? And clear the path ahead. So uh, this is the base concept, and this is what we call tact, steering, and control. The reason that we call it steering and control is because let's say that there's a hoist leave out here or something and they can't finish their work. You're going to steer around that. That's a constraint, okay? Let's say that that thing that you guys found out ahead was just a piece of some materials from another trade partner that was in your way. That's a roadblock. That's something that can be easily uh, re uh, removed. So you're gonna steer around constraints and you're gonna control the environment ahead by removing roadblocks. So I'm gonna talk to you about a couple of the cool things you can do to work with your foreman in the field to make sure, or foreman that you can do to work with your superintendent uh, in the field to create flow. One of my favorite ones is pre-staging materials. In, in Jason's world, if you have day one and day two, and this is 6 a.m. and this is 3 p.m., whatever, when they dog off, I hate, 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 hate when I see workers and foremen running around on treasure hunts getting materials the morning of, no, 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 no. This is a crew's most productive time when their brains are firing, when they're not fatigued, all of us humans get fatigued after 11 a.m., okay? They should be installing work and doing complex tasks that require 100% utilization of their brains and their physical energy. I want the materials staged the night before, if you have a secure site, right? If you can't do it, totally understand. But even so, you should package them and pallet them the night before. I do not want materials shooken out in the, or staged in the morning. So one of the things you can do 
especially if this individual is going to this next zone, if there's an, a space where it's not going to impact them and you're not impacting the other trade, you can pre-stage materials. I love this. Uh, that way the, they're there um, and you can do a material inspection. Now, I love this. I always want to give a shout out to my Hansel Phelps buddies. I was over at a job on a massive hospital and one of the general superintendents was like, uh, can we do a material inspection? I was like, yes, I love this culture. They always do material inspections. So we can pre-stage and do the inspection and really, really jam. So that's the first one. Another one of the things that I like to mention is that just in time means that you can bring it from the vendor all the way to the zone, or you can bring it from the vendor to a staging yard or lay down to the zone. But the key here is, is do not bring it to the zone until it's just in time. Follow the rhythm of the job site. Don't put these materials in everybody's way. So I don't want to pre-stage materials here, 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 all over the place before you need them. No, one zone at a time when you need it just in time. Okay, so that's really, really key. So one of the things you can do is always make sure that you have your materials. Also, I mentioned finish as you go. So I'll put an F and plan ahead. So if you wanna have good conversations with your uh, trade partners, ask them, have we finished? Have we planned? Do we have the materials? Are they just in time? Now let me give you a couple more. One of the things that you can ask is to say, hey, if there's a trade partner behind, what are the things that they're going to need from a substrate or an area standpoint? Here's what I want to talk about here. There's, a, there's two different concepts. There's push, and what I mean by that is if you have uh, the worker right, or with the crew, and this is the general contractor, typically the general contractor will just push another contractor on top of them to where they're like um, in unsafe situations, uh, right, you've got trade stacking, you've got out of sequence work, you've got a bad situation, you've got people that are frustrated. That's not what should happen. We want the contractor, right, or the, the trade right here to pull. So imagine a little, I don't want to say leash because that might sound diminishing, but uh, uh, pulling the contractor behind him or her forward. So when this person moves forward, this person comes with him or her, right? Pull them into the area. So the question would be, uh, in this area, what do you want to see from a cleanliness, organization, completion, scope, install standpoint so that I can pull this contractor, this trade behind me into that zone. So that's really, really important. We really need to make sure that we're pulling people and that we're making handoffs better as we go from zone to zone to zone. And the last thing that I would do if I am a superintendent working with foreman or foreman working with the supers is let's say that we had a plan for this zone. Hopefully that's written down on a board out in the field. And then the crew went and built that zone. And then they're ready to demobilize and finish this and do a handoff. We need to finish. That finishing uh, should be obviously like we've talked about before, uh, right, clean it organize it, finish the work, which might be inspecting, um, demob, I really like that concept. But one of the things that you'll do is you'll do a bit of training or you can call it reflection, okay? So I'll do R-E-F-L. What that means is, you know, hey, what could be better? So I would love it if the foreman, and even if, if you need the superintendent uh, too to clear the path, that's great, to talk to the crew and to say, hey, how did this work? Uh, it did the material staging work? Uh, did the flow work? Uh, were there any big problems, right? Do we want to reconfigure the zones at all? Did you uh, enjoy the uh, tools and equipment that we had? Did the, did the type of ladders or the lifts that we have worked? Was the power source with the spider box close enough? What could we do to improve here? And what kind of training would we want to talk about for the next time when we go into our next zone? So make sure that in your conversations, you're really looking at how can we improve and do better in the next zone. But the bottom line is your conversations between the superintendent and the foreman can be rich 
and meaningful and focused on production. And if you focus on production, then you'll focus on the enjoyment and the experience of the workers and you'll improve from zone to zone to zone and you'll get better. People will enjoy their experience better and you will win and you will shorten at least the phase durations for anything that you're doing. So go out there, have great conversations and work with your foreman for what we call zone control. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We have lots of video and actual Canva guides and Miro resources, and we can help you personally if you want to implement this on your project site. We have a lot of different templates. Give us a call. Again, I hope you've enjoyed this. On we go.